can't go that way. On my way to the hotel, the Morton gang caught up with me. I owed them money, a lot of it. I can't remember what for. Probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out, and I sent the others packing. Just a I found it. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting and the signature. Ted Stryker. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Something about that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. Feels vaguely familiar. I recognize this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them, but where?
That's right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with him. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit, but I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? Edwards had heard the whispers for years. When he lived in Brooklyn, it was only on rare occasions, like when he as a child climbed that tall tree in Central Park, or when he almost drowned in the Hudson River, trying to save his despaired mother. The whispers became more common as he moved to New Orleans, but still rare enough to be ignored. Now as he walks the halls of Darceto, he knows what is calling him. He doesn't want to admit it, but the dark young in the conservatory is telling him to sacrifice. The Cabri San Corn. I can't believe I didn't recognize him. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day, just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. It's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself! I'm down there with him, remember? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find the... There must be a way to save you both, right? Why else would I be here? There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge... 
Don't worry, kid. I'll think of something. This must be where the bridge is operated. Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back.
Conby had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. He could have saved him. There was time. He just chose not to. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. Detective Conby didn't recognize the bridge across Pearl River. It was firmly obfuscated by trauma. Events that had left Combe scarred for life. Are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house! Now get out! <sighs> hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. <sighs> this place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I wanna know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Conby had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the... The... The dark man had forced Conby to face his memories of Grace and her father. How he ran him off the bridge at Pearl River and carried on to steal his child as he was drowning. He then handed Grace off to her mother because that was the job. And you don't question the job. You take the money and get drunk. As Conby slowly accepted his trauma, he started to wonder. 
why it was his and not Jeremy's. Terceto stands on a breeding ground for the grotesque, a temple devoted to rebellious growth, the most ugly and cancerous side of nature. You may be able to shield your psyche for a while, but rest assured your soul will come to pray to that hideous god in time. That is the story of every man and woman who gather around that ancient arbor. They all croak, bark, and bleat because their own bodies are afraid and they wish to repel the evil those words conjure. Ia! Ia! Instead of that blasphemous name, they gossip in hush whispers the name of their seto, Astarte, and the Black Goat of the Woods. Radiography, patient Jeremy Hartwood, date June 14, 1930. Plates, Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations, even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance, as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored.
The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. Mind if I do? That's better. Combi had run their car off the bridge. He pulled Grace out of the sinking... Dr. Gray had been putting Jeremy through some thorough medical investigation. He was trying to break through Jeremy's stories and get to some truth, just like Combi was. Could Dr. Gray have been trying to break the contract as well?
Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? And we're back here. Well, perfect time to have a look around this place. They're coming. I have freed hellish forces, and now the price must be paid. Gassetto is the prey of evil. The sun has set. They will find my body, but will not have my soul. I can imagine the master's fury and the terror in the hearts of his slaves. I hear their footsteps. Understand what I've done. May God forgive me. Farewell. What would happen if I refused? Would the whole world come apart? Would everything conspire to make a new story? Maybe one where I live. Sorry, Frederick. Jeremy? I need help! Wait. 
Can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking Jeremy, me. where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Jeremy was calling out for help, but Condi couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. For a moment, Combi wondered if the boat itself was Jeremy, or if he was below it somehow. It didn't matter right now. Jeremy was clear on one thing. He wanted Combi to get the steamboat running and out of the mud. Conby entered some new, mucky dreamland of Jeremy's, a long-abandoned steamboat aground in the bayou. boat's wedged itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. Jeremy! There are many ways to cross a threshold. The easiest one is being invited. A door swung open, leading you inside. Another is sleep, hypnosis, or even sudden fright. There are those who fold spaces that challenge Mobius or jump through angles that defy Euclid. If you learn to properly use your talisman, you could go anywhere. You wouldn't even need to rely on the fluttering wings of the shrieking Biakis. Where are you? The artist spent a lot of time boating on the vast Lake Pontra train. Poetry, painting, photography, everything seemed to become better by the shimmering water and the opalescent sky. One night, as the sailors returned to Darseto, they found the masquerade ball taking place. It must have been Perosi and Nora who invited their friends from the theater. The sailors quickly fashioned masks out of plaster of Paris and join the festivities. They enjoyed themselves for hours before realizing time was not passing, nor could they find their friends. As they began to worry, they demanded that the guests unmasked, but they could not, because they were not wearing any masks.
pretty weak. I just need some... Uh. Mm-hmm. 